happened then? Uh, next. Once Satan is gone, souls who had been headed for hell will be given an opportunity to resurrect and enter heaven. Eternal life will firmly become a reality. As people who know God and the kingdom of heaven, we will call on God and the source of love as our Father. We will earnestly desire to practice God's tradition of living for the sake of others and will continue to do so for ten thousands of years. This is the tradition of eternal life established in people of the eternal lineage. It is for us to share. This is uh, a speech of August 18, 2000. Now we are on page 372. Uh, it's 525. Uh, we, can, we have to start a new uh, subtopic. I can ask Reverend Francis to come and read further. The new subtopic, Eternal Life. Good morning. Eternal life, for many, the goal of religion is immortality or eternal life. People have always chaffed or chased the, under the limitation of mortality and have found in religion the means to transcend the death, which means to prescribe the possibilities of human existence. As with resurrection, eternal life is not simply about the survival of the soul at death and its journey into the afterlife. Eternal life is not about eternal existence per se, but rather about the quality of that existence. We find that the scriptures of many religions give two meanings to the terms life and death. There is physical life, existence on this earthly plane, and there is spiritual life, the state of blessedness which endures from life to life and transcends death. There is physical death, the dropping of the body, which is an event in the voyage of every soul and spiritual death, the condition of distance from God, ignorance and a hellish existence in the hereafter. Eternal life and immortality are thus ciphers to describe the conditions of blessedness. These conditions is present already in the physical life of the person who realizes truth or lives in God's grace. And it will continue unabated in the hereafter. The person who gains eternal life has accomplished the goal of life and hence death is not to be feared as a limitation. As it is for a worldly person who has tied all hopes to his possessions and pleasures in the world. We note, however, that Buddhist scriptures generally avoid speaking of the state of 
blessedness as eternal life. For Buddhist, Buddhism views the desire for life as a kind of grasping and hence a fetter to liberation. Instead, they speak of nirvana. Father Moons teaches that eternal life is rooted in our relationship with the eternal God based upon God's love for us and our love for God. Eternity does not exist apart from true love, he states. Then he expands upon this concept to describe the relationship between human loves as aspiring for the eternal. This is to be, uh, this is so because we human beings are designed to, for eternal life, eternal love with God and eternal community with the ones we love under God. Now we're on the first subtopic, eternal life in God. Maybe we can read this tomorrow. Uh, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have an everlasting life. This is from John chapter 3 verse 16 and uh, it's really 5.30 so uh, maybe we can read a few more verses maybe uh, the, this line here on the left he who believes in me though he die yet shall he live and whoever lives and believes in me shall never die this is from John 11 verses 25 to 26. Those who have faith and do righteous deeds, they are the best of creatures. Their reward is with God, gardens of eternity, beneath which river flow. They will dwell therein forever. God will well please with them and they with him. All this for such as fear their Lord and cherish her. This is from the Quran, Surah 98, verse 7 to 8. The Supreme Being does not die, I will therefore not die. This is from a Akan proverb, African traditional religions. Being in accord with Tao, he is everlasting. This is from the Tao teaching, 16 from Taoism. Where one sees nothing but one, hears nothing but the one, knows nothing but the one, there is the infinite. Where one sees another, hears another, knows another, there is the finite. The infinite is immortal. The finite is mortal. It is written, He who has realized eternal truth does not see death, nor illness, nor pain. He sees everything as the self and obtains all. This is from the Chandogya Upanishad 7.23-27 from Hinduism. Those who are free from desire are free because all their desires have found fulfillment in the self. They do not die like the others, but realizing Brahman, they merge to Brahman. So it is said, when all the desires that surge in the heart are renounced, the moral becomes immortal. When all the nuts that strangle the heart 
are loosened, the mortal becomes immor immortal. Here in this very life, this is from Brihadaranyaka Upanishad 4, that 4, verses 6 to 7 from Hinduism again. And for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ Jesus our Lord. This is from Romans 6, verse 23. So maybe I'll just finish all of this uh, there long. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, Could we talk about the yes, so uh, let's end here. From Romans 6, 23, and page 373. So, uh, any reflections or any any inspirations about our reading today? The resurrection of the saints, the first resurrection, and eternal life. So, uh, this is a very interesting topic because. Uh, the first resurrection spoken in the Bible according to Father describes the fulfillment of resurrection for the first time in providential history. So this will be accomplished by the Christ of the second advent and he will cleanse people of the original sin and restore them to their true original selves enabling each to fulfill the purpose of creation. And he mentions here about the 144,000 that, you know, that are spotless and they are the first fruits of God and they have not defiled themselves with women. So how about the women, <laughs> you know, and for their chaste and then those who follow the Lamb whenever he goes, these are have been redeemed from mankind. So uh, in one of our father's speech, it's not only 144,000. Even to come up with the 144,000, it, it doesn't, you know, happen instantly. So he started with himself, his own blessing, and then he so that he, God could have a foothold on this earth. Then the three disciples, that are so close to him, then to indemnify the old, um, new, and even the New Testament, he um, restored 12 for each, so it became 36 couples, then 72 couples, then just like Jesus Christ, have 120 followers, then it became 430, these are all providential, and then uh, 777 couples and then 1,200, then the 2,750 couples, uh, 6,000, 8,000, then 1992, 30,000 couples and my own blessing, 360,000 couples. And when I came here in America, they are already giving out this fa uh, flag, the uh, uh, the family for, uh, for no, yeah there's another one the, the church uh, fla flag uh, for peace mm -hmm. family for peace uh, flag that they g gave to all 144,000 churches and mosques so uh, so we have this we gave it to almost you know 144,000 and then when uh, we were, were asked also for the 12,000 clergy blessing uh, on 911, it never, ha uh, you know, it never happened on that uh, September, it's supposed to be September 18, but 911 came. So um, it's not only 144,000 and um, these are not only men. So may, some people, they, you know, the, in, in other religion, they think 
that these 144,000 are spotless and only men. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, and of course, spotless. So, you can be spotless as you, as we learn here from other religions, that if you renounce all your heart's desires, you become immortal. I think that's some kind of rebirth. And then, for others, uh, when they learn about Buddha, sacred, you know, they become also reborn, as we discuss about born anew. And uh, the people who are the first fruits by Father, they become followers of the Lord of the Second Advent. And their original sin was removed and become divine spirits. So we can be divine spirits after the, the Lord of the Second Advent will uh, engraft us to the right, the true olive tree. Yeah. It, this is from the blessing. So once he gave all his blessing and moved them all from Satan's side to God's side, that's why we can be fulfilling even the purpose of creation. So anybody else wants to share about our reading today? Yes, we have Reverend. Yes, good morning, Diane. Yes. That's right. Yes, we have here Reverend Ezra. <coughs> yes, good morning. Uh, just to share about the the resurrection uh, and this resurrection is uh, definitely connected to eternal life. Uh, about the numbers, actually in another in another book, in, another, in the same book of Revelation, it also says that John saying, and I saw a number that no one could count. Uh, and they were all there surrounding the throne. So uh, it was a big, huge multitude. So from the one for, uh, 100 44,000 is the foundation upon which all these other multitudes uh, could come. And uh, we can see like uh, 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 Reverend Francis just described that uh, uh, we are even going and giving flyers and flags that our true parents gave us uh, authority to go to other churches, 144 churches that already has a huge congregation and therefore we cannot uh, continue. We know also the blessings went to uh, 1.2 million and it went on to 4 million. So uh, True Father gave a lot of blessings uh, conditional blessings to uh, to other people and uh, give them a chance to be connected uh, in this resurrection and uh, we also know as we were coming towards the channel group counting down to the what we were calling the D-Day True Father had us go through the three blessings the blessing of resurrection. Uh, there were three, uh, three blessings. Uh, we went through th three different blessings, and I can remember the blessing of resurrection, and then the blessing of eternal life, and uh, uh, and another one. I have a speech that has all of, all of the three of them. 
So all these are connected to our eternal life. Uh, however, I, the quality, now I want to look at the points regarding those who receive the, the resurrection and eternal life. True Father says are people that uh, who gave uh, uh, and uh, we are reading this uh, point on page 372 which reads the hope of all Christianity is at the top the hope of all Christians is to be is to participate in in the first resurrection but who, in fact, shall participate? It shall be those who are the first to believe in, serve, and follow Christ at the second advent. They will assist in fulfilling all the indemnity conditions worldwide and in accomplishing the providence of restoration. In the process, they will be the first to have their original, uh, original sin removed, become divine spirits, and fulfill the purpose of creation. In order for Christ at the second advent to complete the providence of restoration, he must find a certain number of people who can restore indemnity uh, through indemnity the mission of all the past saints who despite their best efforts to do God's will fell prey to Satan when they failed in their responsibilities. We must find these people during his lifetime and lay the foundation of victory over Satan's world. The total number of the saints who Christ at the second advent must find to accomplish this task is 144,000 and this is in the book of Exposition of the Divine Principle in the chapter of Resurrection 2.2.7. Uh, so uh, that's the quality of the people uh, of this 144. Uh, so we know those of us that participated in the blessing must be forgiven the original sin. We know that process and they take the holy wine and be engrafted to the Messiah and changing our blood lineage. So uh, I know uh, true parents in their lifetime found more than 144,000. Uh, so this number is not limiting but it is the basic number upon which Satan could not, could no longer claim a hold of any humanity in uh, uh, about the original, uh, having the condition of the original sin or other conditions of the saints that befell, became prey of Satan because many of them did a lot of great works but as we know and we read from Jesus at the, at the crucifixion he promised that disciple who gained uh, favor from Jesus to be with Jesus in paradise so they didn't go to, etern uh, to heaven but they could go to paradise but now with the Lord of the second coming there is this foundation uh, being established 
uh, here. So that's what I wanted to share uh, this morning. Thank you very much. Uh, Reverend Francis, you want to wind up? We have a second generation coming. workshop uh, coming <coughs> for Hundoke in mm -hmm. a few minutes. Thank yes. you very much. It's already uh, 5.48, 49. Uh, any other reflections? Uh, wise or otherwise? And uh, Father also gave us the secret that will enable us to chase out Satan from everywhere. It is to live for the sake of others, die for the sake of others, and practice altruistic love. So that means we need to be selfless. Okay, so is there anybody else who wants to share? If there is none, let's all rise and have unison in prayer. Our most beloved Heavenly Parents, we're so thankful for reading about the resurrection, the first resurrection with the saints, and we are this first resurrection about the saints, these brothers and sisters who have followed the Lord of the Second Advent. And we pray for other religions like Judaism, that they're still waiting even for the Messiah, and for our Christian brothers who is waiting for the Second Coming. We pray that we can reveal to them that the Lord of the Second Coming is already here. He declared it in 1992 to 30,000 couples in Seoul, Korea, that he is the Lord of the Second Coming. And we should attend just like the saints that will serve and follow the Lamb or the Lord of the Second Coming. And we're so thankful, our heavenly parents, to be born in this lifetime, to know about and serve the Lord of the Second Coming, which is our true parents. We pray that we can also bring our friends, our relatives, and those who are watching the playback in our Hulu King, back to your Boston. We pray that they can join us in the blessings that our true mother will be conducting, so that they can change their blood lineage from Satan's side to the able parents to God's side. And we pray all this in all our names and in my name. Athanasius Francis, sick of the land, blessed central family, Arju, Arju, Arju. Uri yes, Good morning, Diane. 
Good morning, Reverend Oliver. So, it's 5.53 and... Yeah, this, yes, sir. Ah, uh, yes, Reverend Oliver. Is Edgar going to be happy uh, our, uh, Louis Johnson is here and uh, Reverend Essa is here. Yes, Yes. Uh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, he's here. Yes, Reverend Oliver. Yes, yeah. Sorry, could you repeat that again? Oh, okay. Are you going to be there today? Uh, yes, for a while. Um, uh, Reverend Mungai will come at around one, uh, seven, seven, uh, seven thirty. I won't leave until he's here and with the other lecturers. Um, Reverend Sona uh, is coming. Uh, so we have the education department uh, uh, coming over to do the 